You ugly son of a bitch! The year is 2016. Many great and amazing titles had landed onto the gaming scene for many of us to enjoy. These games are including, but not limited to, you know, Battlefield 1, you got some Doom in there, Dark Souls 3, and, uh, you know, Overwatch. <laughs> you know, the only good Overwatch, because the other one's fucking terrible. And these games had brought smiles to all of us and brought hours and hours of fun and joy for all of us. However, there was one game, one game out there that few people had seen and knew about, really. A small indie title whose pre-alpha footage that was posted on YouTube looked pretty interesting and unlike anything we have seen at the time. This small, tiny seed implanted into the ground of the gaming community eventually would grow and sprout to being not only my favorite co-op game I have played, but now one of my favorite games I have played in a long time. And its name is Deep Rock Galactic. You know, like get a couple of rocks, maybe some stone, kill some glyphids, grow a beard, get, a, get me a beard, baby, because we're gonna go in deep. I don't even know where to start with this video. Um, not only is this the first video in this type of fashion, like a serious review one, but I've put so many hours into this game and I've been having so much fun. It's gonna be hard to, to cram absolutely everything I have to say about the game for and uh, stuff you should know about Deep Rock Galactic to people who haven't played before. Um, I'm gonna try not to make this video super long. But, uh, here we go, I guess. Uh, FYI, uh, this video came out during Season 4 of the game, so... Stuff may change in the future, maybe? Uh, so, uh, let's begin Man, I don't like where that text is going. One of the reasons why I like DRG so much, and not only because of the gameplay, which we'll get into later, but like just how much effort and care was put into the game. Um, it's really jarring nowadays to see that because we're currently living in a time where most game studios would rather just see how little effort they could put into an unfinished product without people noticing than actually making a fucking working game. <laughs> So when I felt that actual time care and effort was put into Deep Rock as I played, I was I was really surprised, I was like shocked even. As if like the planets were aligned for this very moment to occur. <laughs> Ghost Ship Studios put so much effort into what they do and you know, they take really good care of the game. Um, for example, they have a Deep Rock Galactic Discord server where all the devs are in, they interact with the people that are in it. And from what I saw, there is a feedback channel sort of thing where you you can give feedback on the game, bug reports. And what's great about the bug report thing that I enjoy so much, the devs actually interact with the people in there and they actually like like let's say there's a bug going around i remember a while ago there was a glitch with uh gunner's shield where it would not uh, regenerate and one of the dev the q a dev was just like walking the person through like how to recreate the bug and eventually they fixed it which is amazing i have not seen that at all <laughs> in any game i played i played a bunch of games but um i have not seen that level of care and attention to fixing a bug like that, just walking it through, and it's just crazy. There's a bunch of things that I, that they do that I'm, I'm just shocked because nobody does it now. They just, every company now just, they shovel out some garbage game and they're like, oh, don't worry, the 60 FPS mode will come next year. Monetization is another thing that 
Ghost Ship games in Deep Rock Galactic handle really well. Unlike in Overwatch 2, for example, where you get charged $15 for content that was promised to come out for free on fucking launch day, DRG's monetization isn't scummy or anti consumer at all. You, you know, you pay $29.99 for the game. Sometimes it's on sale for cheaper on Steam, but you know, moving on. Every weapon, character, and mission is free to unlock. There's kind of a grind for that, you know, for unlocking their upgrades and mods and stuff, which we'll get into later in the video. And the only way to pay for more, you know, outside of the base game, is the DLC, which is strictly skins and cosmetics and, and shit like that so that's like it, that's like wow that's amazing there's also a battle pass in the game but unlike every other piece of paid live service dog shit that comes out nowadays <laughs> <laughs> The battle pass is completely free and there are zero candy crush boosters to it so you can't like pay to progress into the battle pass which is nice in terms of deep rock galactic and ghost ship games as a whole they handle it extraordinarily well which is amazing yeah i know i've been talking about this for a while already but i, I just i just really like appreciate how greed slimy disgusting hands have not touched ghost ship studios as a company and deep rock as a game and i'm just that's like wow that's amazing it's, it's nice to see that it's nice it's nice to see a game company that isn't so fucking greedy like everything else now which is you know it, 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 it deserves its own topic in this video but that's enough about that let's actually talk about the fucking game that i made a video about swim repeat swim in deep rock you play as a dwarf one of four to be exact First up to bat is the Scout class. He specializes in picking off single targets and tanky targets and is really good with mobility with his grappling hook and some overclocks that exceed his mobility. Second to bat is the Gunner, which it just shoots at stuff. Really simple, you know, he can switch between single targets and crowds if he wants to. But he has the shield that we mentioned earlier that is very good at giving you and your teammates some space and some breathing room, as well as reviving your teammates very safely. So it's very good at that. Next up is the driller who, as the name suggests, can drill into terrain. He's also extremely good at crowd clear with his crisper flamethrower, as well as other weapons, which we'll get into later in the video. So he's really good at that. And last but not least is the engineer who can aid and support his team with the numerous tools that he can use at his disposal, as well as his sentry guns and platforms. Each one of the doors feel really good to play, and I really never get bored of playing each and every one of them, mainly because of their weapons, their play styles, the combinations of stuff you can use in each mission, which we'll get into in a few minutes, as well as just the mechanics that surround them, make them very refreshable each and every time, and you can just choose different play styles for each dwarf. For example, there is an overclock called the RJ250 compound for engineers PGL, which you can like Team Fortress 2 style rocket jump around and fly around. Combining this with the platform gun, you can reach places that no one other than the scout can reach. So you can help them out with getting minerals and such. That and a bunch of other overclocks just highlight how creative you can be with each and every time you play Deep Rock Galactic. You can do basically anything you would want to do. You want to be the force of nature from Team Fortress 2. You want your boomstick to be that. Boom, special powder overclock right there for you. You want to troll the entire lobby and be as ineffective as possible. Boom, fat boy overclock for the PGL. Have fun. There are just many overclocks in this game and just weapons, just the weapon themselves just grow a bunch of creativity in someone's brain and it makes the experience enjoyable every time and it really never gets old for me which is why i have so many hours in the game <laughs> there's just a lot of content in this game and a bunch of things they nail perfectly that make the experience enjoyable each and every time another major component in this never-ending enjoyment of the game are the mission types. There are eight to be exact. First one is the mining expedition is pretty simple. You mine some more kite, which it shows you on the top right of the screen. And once you're done with that, you call on the meal, you go home. The second mission type is the very swarm intensive egg hunt missions where you collect a set amount of eggs, survive the waves that come with them, and go home. The third mission is on-site refinery where you hook up a bunch of 
pump jacks to bur liquid burk height wells. You connect them to the mine head, you start it up, you fix them, and then it, you go home. Next up is salvage operation, where you repair a bunch of mini mules to a abandoned drop pod, where you set up an uplink and fill it up and use that to go home. Next up is point extraction, where you get a set number of equark things, which are in walls that you give off a blue speckled hue and then you go home. Next up is escort duty where you defend and lead a giant drill dozer to the Omnidian Heartstone where it mines through it, you collect the Heartstone and then you go home. Second to last are the elimination missions where you kill two to three dreadnoughts which are giant cliffed monsters that come out of eggs. You pop the eggs, you kill them, and then you move on. And last but not least, as of right now, is Industrial Sabotage, where you hack and disable two shield generators for this giant Bill Cipher looking motherfucker called the Caretaker, and you kill it, take the data rack from it, and go home. All of these mission types are very fun to play, and combining that with the aforementioned uniqueness of each class and their overclocks and mods and weapons and stuff, the experience never gets old and I really really appreciate that like the creativity that Ghost Ship put into this game with the missions and stuff is very very celebratory like good job like you made me play for so long and I still I'm not bored I'm not dried out I just keep playing the game because I, there's another playstyle I want to play oh I got this overclock I want to try it Ooh, this mission looks fun oh this difficulty this custom difficulty looks fun which you know modding is awesome but like there's a bunch of content in this game and they just nailed the missions in my opinion to where I just don't stop playing them and replayability is a major pro for this game and I really appreciate how replayable it is. I've mentioned overclocks here and there and different weapons for each dwarf and I believe that deserves its own topic so let's have a look see shall we Oh boy, we reached this point in the video. One of Deep Rock's biggest talking points. We mentioned them a lot in this video. Weapons and overclocks are the main bulk of Deep Rock's customization and creativity of you and your playstyle. We're gonna start with the weapons of each class and I'm gonna be very brief and give you a simple synopsis of each weapon because if we were to go into all the details of each weapon in this game, we would be here for a long time. <laughs> So I'll just give you a short synopsis of each weapon. Starting with Scout's primaries, we have the GK2, the M1000, and the Drac. The GK2 and M1000 are good at picking off high value targets that Scout wants to kill, as well as chunking through tanky enemies. The M1000 does this a little better because it has the tier 3 armor break mod, but both are pretty good options. And the Drac is pretty good at crowd clear with these two overclocks, which is a nice addition to have in solo. Moving on to the Scout's secondaries, we got the Jury Rig Boomstick, the Zookobs, and the Bolt Shark. The Boomstick is good for crowd clear in a way with blow through rounds, as well as range ignition with tier 5 fire. The Zookobs are a pretty good single target option if you really need that, or you can build them for crowd clear with cryo minelets. And the Bolt Shark is a pretty good all rounder that can pick off high value targets as Scout wants to kill as well as having access to pheromone bolts which are very good attention savers as well as a good way to clump up a bunch of enemies into one big clump next up is gunner and for primaries we have the lead storm minigun the thunderhead auto cannon and the hurricane rocket launcher the lead storm is great at being flexible you can dish out damage against grunts that are in your way as well as good single target damage the auto cannon kind of fills in a in between with the lead storm and the hurricane it does pretty okay damage against enemies as well as some aoe so it's kind of good at crowd clear and the hurricane rocket launcher is very good at crowd clear and this could be amplified with mine layer system for example or if you want more single target damage you can take jet fuel homebrew which is pretty nice now gunner's secondary is 
guys are pretty nice and they're easy to explain. We got the Bulldog Heavy Revolver, the Burt 7 Burst Pistol, and the Arms Core Coil Gun. Both the Bulldog and the Burt 7 are very good at single target, but Bulldog kind of wins out here due to its better consistent damage, as well as it having access to two amazing overclocks. These are Elephant Rounds and Volatile Bullets. Elephant Round is pretty good at popping tri jaws and killing them, and the Volatile Bullets is arguably one of the best single target options in the game, period. The Coil Gun is kind of a safety weapon, um, with especially with Tier 3 Fear, and if you use the Hellfire Overclock is extremely good at eating crowds, which is very nice. Or if you want to build your coil gun for more single target damage, you can take the mole. Now moving on to Driller's primaries, which are very easy to explain. We have the Christopher Flamethrower, the Cryo Cannon, and the Sludge Pump. The Flamethrower is really good at crowd clear, as we mentioned earlier in the video. The Cryo Cannon is really good at freezing bugs and any flying enemy and stopping them in the tracks. And the Sludge Pump can split its power with single target and crowd clear although you can make it more single target leaning with volatile impact mixture for example or if you want more crowd clear or crowd control you could use disperser compound and secondary is a pretty easy to explain we got the sabata pistol the experimental plasma charger and the colette wave cooker the sabata at base is kind of underwhelming but with some overclocks it becomes pretty good single target for driller the experimental plasma charger is a very interesting secondary for driller if you take tier 5 thin containment field you basically now have a ball of death that almost kills everything in it and the wave cooker is a pretty nice synergy weapon for your primaries and it's really good at clearing up very small enemies like swarmers and nanocyte jellies and last but not least we have the engineer starting off with the warthog auto shotgun the stubby baltic smg and the lock one smart rifle the warthog acts as engineer self-defense weapon and it's a very nice safety tool especially with stunner for example it's also a pretty nice single target option if you need that the stubby is a pretty nice smg that can spread electricity to a bunch of grunts and targets and the lock one smart rifle is pretty good with two overclocks in particular the first one is executioner this gives the engineer and the lock one in general one of the highest single target damage outputs possible and the second one is explosive chemical rounds which gives the engineer very nice crowd clear like some of the best in the game so that's amazing and finally we have engineer secondaries these include the deep core pgl the breach cutter and the shard diffractor all of ng secondaries are nice with dealing with different types of crowds the pgl is great with dealing with squishy targets like mactera spawn and grunts for example and with rj250 you do less damage but you gain a huge ammo increase as well as gaining the ability to grenade jump like in team fortress 2 so that's very nice the reach cutter is great with dealing with mixed swarms so grunts guards slashers for example and they're really good against praetorian swarms which are just like three praetorians which is really good and the shard diffractor can be a flexible single target aoe weapon with its weak point mod if you want to fully go into crowd play, you can take fog Heil impact reactor or if you want more of a single target option for the shard diffractor you can take overdrive which is good Okay, so we went through all the weapons of each door, primaries and secondaries, and it's time to get into overclocked, which is, um, we've been talking about them a little bit. Overclocks are very good. They give the weapon that you're using much more customization. There are three types of overclocks. The first type, which is cleans. These are overclocks that give small buffs to a weapon with no downside. The second type is balanced overclocks, which give better upsides than cleans, but they also come with downsides. And last but not least is unstable overclocks. These give the most game-changing buffs to a weapon with a harsh downside. There are many different ways to unlock overclocks. There's only one requirement to do so. You don't have to promote at least one dwarf. Doesn't matter which one it is, and it doesn't matter level. As long as it's promoted once, you get access to overclocks. This will give you a blank matrix core a weapon overclock and a cosmetic overclock the real important thing here is the blank matrix cores the blank matrix cores allow you to choose more specifically which dwarf gets an overclock through the events events are randomly spawning rare side missions that could spawn in every mission there's a rare chance of them spawning some examples of events that can occur are the omen 
Ebonite Mutation, Cursite Mutation, and Trisolite Deposit. These are mini games in which, when completed, allow you to activate your blank matrix core to choose which class gets the overclock. It's two weapon overclocks and a cosmetic overclock each and every time. Another way of obtaining overclocks is through deep dives. These are a three level compilation of missions that get harder as you progress through them. For each mission you complete, you will get a blank matrix score, a weapon overclock, and a cosmetic overclock. And this is the same thing for the elite deep dive, which is just the regular deep dive, but a little harder. Has four to has 5.5. And last but not least, as far as I know, is the weekly core hunt this refreshes every week and you complete a set of missions and they give you a blank matrix core a weapon overclock and a cosmetic overclock as you see there is kind of a pattern here a grindy pattern to this you're gonna have to complete a lot of missions to get these overclocks and that's one of the minor complaints i have with this game is that everything is grindy i understand that ghost ship wants you to continuously play their game i, I understand that you know it's fun it's refreshing but it's a hard grind to get which overclock you want because with deep dives for example it's a random weapon overclock and a random cosmetic overclock it's not like with the events where you get to at least choose which dwarf gets which specific type of overclock it's just a random one same with promoting your dwarves i wish i'm not a game designer but i wish there was a way for you to after let's say you complete a deep dive after completing that you get to choose which dwarf gets the weapon overclock and which dwarf gets the cosmetic overclock i think that'll be better it'd be nicer it won't be so rng based and you know rng is the most annoying thing ever <laughs> same with promoting your doors it can have that sort of system too another complaint i have with this game is the progression locks for weapon mods not overclocks but the mods themselves like the upgrades for the weapons let's say you unlock the m1000 you, you you spend the credits and the minerals to get it okay cool you got the weapon now you have to wait into your specific level to reach all the tiers of our weapon mods which is kind of annoying you know i would much prefer it if they just had all of the mods you know keep the keep the prices keep keep like the, the credits and mineral you know price but like remove the level restrictions that's kind of annoying especially for new players because you know leveling up when you're new is pretty tedious it's a very tedious process trust me i've been there it just kind of gets annoying and repetitive so i would like for it to just get rid of those level restrictions and just allow us to you know grind for those minerals grind for those credits and then purchase the upgrades but like that's all the complaints i have of this game <laughs> like that's it that's all i have the positives significantly outweigh the negatives in my opinion like in my experience of playing this game and uh that's it like two nitpicks <laughs> like they, that, if they improved on those this game would be near flawless in my in my personal opinion i'm gonna have to keep saying that over and over and over again because i'm gonna get somebody in the comments like um, actually this game isn't as good as you think it is it's kind of boring yeah 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 that's great that's great yeah you really like me yeah so now uh, go 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 take that opinion to crash into a treat like sony bono what can i tell you anyways uh i hope you now have a understanding of what overclocks are and what weapon mods are you know they're very great piece of game design here like you could just customize your weapons as much as you want like as i said before if you want like to rocket jump like team fortress 2 and deep rock you could use the rj250 compound overclock for the pgl just boom max out on ammo go ahead fly around i don't care and i understand that other games allow you to customize your weapons to your heart's desire but it's like bewildering as to how much customization you can have in this game and the cosmetics in this game you can customize your dwarf as much as you want you you can be eggman like <laughs> go ahead go customize your dwarf or your heart's why? desire i don't, I don't why? care why? and we reached the end of this video I know it's been a, a long fucking time, but I covered everything about Deep Rock that I wanted to go over. I hope this helped you understand this game more and its mechanics and such. And if a friend asks you, hey, you, you, I played this game called Deep Rock. Um, you want to play with me? Now you kind of have an understanding of what it is and what you're getting into. I really love this game and I felt like this game deserved the video to be talked about because it's, it's an example of a, a needle in the haystack situation in which with modern gaming now where it's a bunch of shit and like uh, and there's like one like piece of gold like a gold nugget in that like that, that mountain of shit and this is it this is like the hidden gem i would say one of the hidden gems of today's modern gaming scene and i hope i did a good job with explaining it to you and hope you have a better understanding of it so yeah happy mining out there rocket stone now buy coca-cola buy, coca -Cola, buy dr, dr. Pepper, pepper and, and buy sprite, sprite.